In this video, I want to talk a little bit about beta, which is an important risk measurement, and the security market line, which gives us a way to calculate the required return for a given stock based on its beta. So a little bit here on beta. Beta is a measure of market risk. We talked about that before. This is appropriate measure of risk when considering a stock as part of a well-diversified portfolio. When we're evaluating a stock by itself, we want to use standard deviation because at that point we've not eliminated the firm specific risk, so we need to include that as well as market risk into our analysis. Remember, standard deviation measures total risk, which includes both firm specific and market risk. Beta is just market risk. When we have a well diversified portfolio, firm specific risk is no longer that important, so we just want to see how sensitive that stock is to the overall market are to the rest of our portfolio. When combined with the security market line, which we're going to introduce in a little bit, beta can help us determine the required return associated with a particular stock. So what rate of return do we need in order to make that a worthwhile investment? Our formula for beta is we take the standard deviation of the stock times the correlation between the stock and the overall market and we typically use the S&P 500 as a measurement of the market divided by the standard deviation of the market. And then once we have beta, we can use it in the security market line. We have the risk-free rate. Oftentimes we use the 10-year treasury note or treasury bond to approximate the risk-free rate because that's an investment with about as low of a risk level as we can find. Some people like to use a three-month treasury bill I prefer the 10-year treasury note because it has more of a long-term focus, which is consistent with stocks. Beta, which we talked about up here. This K bar sub M is the expected return on the market, the rate of return that we think the average stock is going to earn, minus the risk-free rate. This portion here, this expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate, is oftentimes referred to as the risk premium. The idea is stocks are risky investments. Therefore, investors, if they're gonna invest in the market or the average stock, they wanna earn a higher rate of return than the risk-free rate. So this number will be positive. The more sensitive investors are to risk, the higher this number is going to be. So in periods like 2008 and early 2009, when people are very sensitive to risk, this risk premium tends to be a little bit higher. The expected return on the market is going to have to be quite a bit higher than the risk-free rate to get people to buy stocks. During other periods, like in the 2004 time period, people weren't as sensitive to risk at that point, and so this number could have been a little bit smaller. It didn't take as much of a premium to get people to invest in stocks because they weren't as concerned about the risk. But we take the risk premium, multiply by beta. High beta stocks are going to have higher levels of risk, so this times the risk premium will be much larger. Low beta stocks will have less risk when we multiply by the risk premium and give us a smaller number. So we take the risk-free rate, and this gives us kind of like a total risk premium for that specific stock because we multiply it by beta, and that gives us the required return for that stock. Let's walk through an example. We want to calculate the beta and the required return for Google and Caterpillar, assuming a risk-free rate of 3.8% and an expected return on the market of 10%. So let's go ahead and look at our data. In order to calculate beta, we know the beta for Google is equal to the standard deviation of Google times correlation between Google and the S&P 500. That's our measure of the market. We want to divide that by the standard deviation of the market, which is the S&P 500. So now, as we look here, we can see that the standard deviation for Google is 12.37%. The correlation between Google and the market is 0 
and the standard deviation for the market, that S&P 500, is 4.57. So when we go in and do these calculations here, we have the standard deviation for Google, again, 12.37%. times the correlation between Google and the market, 0.41, divided by the standard deviation for the market, which was 4.57. Now we just grab our calculator, go through 12.37 times 0.41, and now divide that by the 4.57 standard deviation of the market. That gives us a beta for Google of 1.11. Just gonna round it to two decimal places. So we see that 1.11 is our beta for Google. And now real quick, we'll do the beta for Caterpillar. So we have the beta for, cat, for beta for Caterpillar. Again, same process, standard deviation for Caterpillar. Standard deviation for Caterpillar is 11.06. Times the correlation between Caterpillar and the market. Correlation to the overall market of Caterpillar, 0.79. and divide by the standard deviation of the market. It's that 4.57% standard deviation for the S&P. Go ahead, grab our calculator, work through the calculations, 11.06 times 0.79 divided by 4.57 gives us a beta of 1.91. In our next video, we'll talk a little bit about those betas and use them to calculate the required return for Google and Caterpillar. Talk about what we do with that required return once we get it.